So um, as far as current status, um, shortly after uh, they did uh, come out with their newer version of terminals, um, SpaceX announced uh, StarShield, which is a um, future constellation to be deployed by SpaceX for the US government. Um, so instead of using mm -hmm. Starlink's uh, commercial uh, set of satellites, they're deploying a secondary constellation that would be exclusively for US government use. Um, some of the differences as far as the hardware on the vessels themselves, uh, pretty much the exact same terminals, except they're adding additional chips for uh, encryption and the ability to actually connect to that uh, future constellation. Um, we began our first uh, deployment of uh, antennas in uh, June, July of uh, this year. Uh, Rachel Carson was uh, the first vessel that was deployed. Um, we've also since deployed Sproul, uh, Sally Ride, Sekuliak, uh, Thompson. Uh, those two both have uh, two terminals on them, mostly to deal with uh, superstructure issues. Sekuliak, for example, uh, pretty much the location we chose, they've got uh, two larger 2.4 meter domes that can also be shooting KU service that are on the top of the bridge. We've got two Starlink panels that are kind of on either side of those domes and tilted a little bit further down to get more of the horizon and uh, allow those uh, larger 2.4 meter domes to shoot over them. Um, and then uh, we've also deployed Neil Armstrong. Ravel was supposed to have two terminals. Uh, we actually just sent one to Ravel and did another one to Langseth. Uh, we had an opportunity to do Langseth and uh, Neil Armstrong together at the same time. So that was pretty much our first set of uh, terminals that we'd ordered. Um, we've been working with SpaceX to get the rest of the fleet's uh, terminals ordered set since September. Um, Definitely with the introduction of resellers and some other elements there. Uh, uh, it's been not as slow going as the initial set of orders, but uh, just as uh, painful to pull them out. But uh, we're looking at uh, issuing kios for the remainder of the fleet and getting those uh, orders in tomorrow. And hopefully we'll actually see something, you know, yes very soon and uh, get the rest of the fleet deployed before the end of the year. A um, couple of interesting notes, um, just for an update of uh, how reliable these have been compared to some of our earlier uh, experiences on Ravel. Um, for the most part, uh, a number of these terminals, uh, Thompson, Rachel Carson, we literally just shipped those to the University of Washington. Uh, they installed them themselves, swapped them on the ship. We remotely activated them and they've been working great. Uh, um, and coverage hasn't really been an issue. Uh, they've been performing well. Um, largely, we did the same thing with Sproul and uh, Sally Ride. Um, shipped them to the vessels, had ResTex install them um, on the ships. Uh, you know, fairly low uh, interaction from our side. Uh, Sekuliak, we actually, I went up to know them and deployed them with uh, uh, Julian during one of their four calls. Um, fairly similar experience. Uh, it's literally, you know, rail clips uh, gone for uh, as low of modification of the vessels as possible. Um, Neil Armstrong and Sally Ride, we did a little bit more of an extreme uh, installation with Unistrat, and that was largely just to get the terminals out and avoid obstructions. Um, but, uh, you know, looking to keep a lot of these installations as simple as possible, get that full sky view with uh, the rule of must and bus as possible. Um, Ravel, we had installed uh, uh, new masks for these kind of out on the wing of either side of the vessel uh, during shift yard period where we were totally expecting to have these uh, terminals in hand over a year ago. 
um, but uh, um, you know, we've definitely got great full sky view from both of those those terminal uh, locations. But um, that, that's probably the most extreme install we've done, and that was really just based on not having anything in hand, trying to figure out what this installation is going to be in the best place for them when we had that shipyard period. Um, Roger Revelle, uh, when deployed, um, we actually shipped that terminal to South Africa. That is a country that is not licensed uh, to commercially operate Starlink. Um, one of the important things to note with Star Shield, even though it is uh, currently using the uh, um, Starlink constellation, because it is a U.S. government vessel um, with U.S. government service uh, on a U.S. flag vessel. Um, part of what SpaceX is doing is um, not geofencing uh, those vessels in countries where they're not licensed to operate. Uh, they still geofence a number of uh, countries with embargoes on them. But um, one of the big advantages we're getting by having um, Star Shield service at this point is while well, SpaceX takes, in what some cases could be years, to get those licenses to operate in every country in the world, um, we are able to uh, make those international port calls to countries that aren't licensed. And for Atlantic Explorer, for you, it's sometime in 2024 or in the future. Um, actually send a terminal to Bermuda and have it work uh, as opposed to shutting off when it comes into Bermuda and only working in the deep ocean. Um, so Lynn Revell specifically um, was definitely very encouraging that we were able to uh, deploy that terminal to a country that wasn't licensed to operate, throw it on import, have it come up, work. Um, also believe they spent a little bit of time in Argentinian waters after they made their uh, South Atlantic crossing before coming back into Chile. So um, some some experience we've seen with uh, uh, a vessel actually operating like we want to see it. Um, on the on the same token, uh, some of the initial stuff we've seen from Sekuliak and uh, uh, also on Coast Guard Cutter Healy. Um, some of the geofencing isn't all that accurate. Uh, you know, SpaceX is definitely learning and uh, definitely a little sloppy with some of what they've done. Um, going through the Bering Strait, Sukuliak and uh, Healy both pass through zones where even though they're in U.S. territorial waters, SpaceX, based on cell size and other odd things such as applying Russian EEZs into U.S. waters um, and actually block service because it's too close to Russia. Um, so in, in those cases, uh, our traditional geo services have uh, pretty much taken over, but on um, all of these vessels for the most part, Starshield is uh, online and when it is online, it is the preferred path that those vessels are taking. Um, most of the speeds we're seeing uh, shift to shore. We've seen some peaks higher, but typically five megs is about what I would expect. Um, there have been some great times where we've hit 20 megs. Definitely not the, uh, the norm. Um, download speeds, though, uh, definitely very impressive. Uh, yeah typically saying anywhere from 20 to 100 megs. Um, 